What's up guys, hope y'all are having a great day today because we are going to be reviewing one of the games that personally I was the most excited for this year when it got announced. It's one of those games that came out during the Xbox 360 generation and was quickly forgotten and I think it kind of got stuck in IP hell for a little while. This is one of the few, I would say, more mainstream titles that is not backwards compatible on Xbox as of today for the Xbox 360 backwards compatibility program and that's because it was kind of just in limbo as an IP. Well, recently, the original creator of this game purchased the rights to the game back, and he was able to release a remastered version of this game, and that, of course, is none other than Lollipop Chainsaw, and more specifically, the Repop Remastered Edition. <laughs> Now, this is a guilty pleasure title for me, to say the least. It is just a dumb, fun, funny, and just over-the-top, turn-your-brain-off type action games that I've ever played personally. And obviously, as you can probably see on screen, there's definitely another selling point. <laughs> Magna Genocide, baby! <laughs> this game is absolutely 100% self-aware. It doesn't try to take itself seriously at all. It's constantly cracking sex jokes and just over-the-top dialogue that you're really not going to hear in any way, shape, or form, especially in the modern gaming landscape. But to me, this is the type of video game that personally I miss the most from the Xbox 360 generation. The short burst, no pun intended, action kind of titles that would take you maybe like five to ten hours to beat that you could beat in a day if you wanted to that are just really fun action-packed and non-stop just good times from start to finish that you can play in one sitting if you want to or play it over the course of a couple nights and I think that is a lost art in the video game industry today and I was very excited for that reason when this game was finally announced to be getting a re-release because it's one of those games I thought was just going to kind of be lost to history but here it is and it is back and better than ever. Now, I ended up actually streaming this game all the way through on release night in about five to six hours, so it's not a very long game, but I think that's perfectly fine for what it is because you're definitely going to want to go back and replay through this game several times. It's that much fun, and it's just one of those games that you could always pick up, play for like an hour, and guarantee that you're going to have a smile on your face and a great time walking away from it. So, I completed the game on launch night. I stayed up all night streaming it and here I am recording this review so to make a long story short if you're on the fence about whether or not you should buy lollipop chainsaw repop I'd say go for it man this game is just about $40 I think which to me is an absolute steal you're not going to find anything else out there like this and it is definitely worth experiencing at least once in fact you're probably going to experience it multiple times because it's one of those really just fun games to go back and replay every once in a while or you know to get all the achievements or trophies or whatever you want to do but overall before we even get into this I just want to say I highly recommend you go out and purchase this game because I think it's definitely worth it and I would love to see more games like this come out in the future I know it's kind of like a long shot especially given the state of the modern video game industry but definitely give this game a chance now the first thing I want to talk about is the gameplay now the gameplay in this game is fun for the most part there is a lot of jank it's definitely a product of its time. You can tell it didn't have the biggest budget behind 
find it, but it has jank in the most charming ways possible. Like you can just tell this is a game that was made by a smaller development team that probably did the best with the resources they had available at the time. And it shows because while it is a little janky at time, especially during the boss fights, there is a pretty decently deep combo system that you'll unlock additional moves for through the in-game store as you earn coins throughout your playthrough. So you can pick and choose kind of what combos you want to learn and win, which I think is great. And overall, man, it's a fun game to play. It's one of those turn off your brain, fun action hack and slash titles that you're never going to have to actually get sweaty or try super hard with unless you're playing on one of the higher difficulties, which personally I did not do. So I cannot attest to that. But overall, man, this is definitely more of a casual experience than anything else. And because of that, the jank is definitely forgivable, but it's not anything that takes away from the overall experience. As you can see by the gameplay, it's pretty fluid for the most part. Sometimes your hits won't register and some enemies will be dodging your moves and you're wondering, okay, how the hell is this happening? But eventually you'll kind of figure out a pattern and figure out what type of combos or attack you're supposed to be using on what particular type of enemy. And it kind of evens itself out. So just know going in, it is a little janky, but the more you play it, the more you kind of account for that. And it starts to feel a lot more fluid and a lot just more well designed from a gameplay perspective. So that is something I do want to know. But for the most part, this is an action game. Very rarely are you taken out of the driver's seat. You're basically chopping up zombies with a chainsaw for the entirety of the game, punching them with pom poms, racking up combos, collecting zombie medals and getting new upgrades and abilities and new character skins. Like it's just a classic 360 era action game that I think if you're a fan of that type of game, like I am, you're going to absolutely enjoy. So gameplay for me overall is definitely a positive. I do really like it a lot. Just no going in. There is some of that jank from like those lower budget Xbox 360 titles from back in the day. If you've ever played those type of games, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But overall, it is definitely more than adequate and definitely worth playing. So moving on from there, we go to the story. And basically the story starts off with you playing as Juliet, a cheerleader in high school who just turned 18 the morning that the game starts. to my bedroom. Don't think that me letting you in here is an invitation for any funny stuff. I mean, not that I have a problem with funny stuff. Especially not if you really like the person. But that isn't what I wanted to talk about. Today is, as they say in Spain, my cumpleaños. That's right, my birthday. I'm 18 today. Woo, we can all uh, play this game with a clear conscience now, at least. But yeah, basically you play as Juliet, who's going to meet her boyfriend before school, and a zombie outbreak occurs, and all hell breaks loose from there, essentially. And a kid that I guess got bullied or something in high school becomes like this emo overlord and summons these zombie demon lords that basically start killing everyone at the school, and it's your job to stop them and save of the day, essentially. This is not a deep story by any stretch of the imagination, and basically what happens is Nick, your boyfriend, gets his head cut off by Julia because he gets infected by a zombie, so in order to save his life, she uses magic after sawing his head off with a chainsaw in order to keep him alive in that state, and he is attached to your hip for the remainder of the game, which makes for some really funny commentary and funny moment-to-moment -moment dialogue between the two of them. So, overall, it's a very charming story in that sense that it's extremely simple it never takes itself seriously and it is filled with constant just really great early 2010s late 2000s humor that I definitely miss like this is not a game that if you're worried about political correctness or anything like that you're gonna want to play because bro at times like characters will straight up say thank you for saving me Juliet now I'm gonna masturbate to you tonight Juliet, I am so totally gonna masturbate to you tonight. But yeah, after defeating the five zombie lords, you have to defeat the main guy who summoned them, and I'm not gonna spoil the ending in case you're interested, but it is insanely bare bones. It's an excuse to have the premise, and it does not take itself seriously. You're not playing this game for the story. You're definitely playing it for the over-the-top action, the funny dialogue and jokes and humor, and of course, you can't forget Juliet's assets. Uh, Juliet, it looks like you've really gotten ahead in life. <laughs> My teacher, 
Morikawa Sensei is the most amazing veteran zombie hunter ever. Oh, uh, correct. I have studied the zomboid sciences for 40 years. Kill the motherfuckers! Yes, Sensei. So overall, look at this as more of like a porn story or just an excuse to do cool shit, essentially. So don't go into this looking for some award-winning narrative, which I think is pretty blatantly obvious by the title and the look of the game thus far and what I've described. So overall, the story, I think, does what it's supposed to do. So therefore, I am a fan of it. I love games that don't take themselves too seriously. Now, as far as graphics go, you could definitely tell that this is a remastered Xbox 360 game. It looks like a 360 game visually it has that 360 era art style that kind of mirrors photorealism but still kind of looks comic booky or hand drawn which personally I really like I think the character models all look good you can definitely tell it's a little rough around the edges at places but I think that adds to the charm personally especially as someone who has member berries for this title and the overall generation of gaming that it comes from so personally I think the visuals are more than adequate now I did play this game on PlayStation 5 so if you're playing it on Xbox, if you're playing it on Nintendo Switch, if you're playing it on PC, your mileage may vary in that category, but the game looked great. It ran perfectly fine. I didn't ever notice any major frame drops or anything like that. So it seems like graphically and performance wise, this game is rock solid. And I don't really think I wanted them to completely overhaul the look of this game. I much preferred having that nostalgic feel going through it, but yeah, definitely something to keep in mind. It is a 360 game that got a, let's say higher resolution coat of paint pretty much there is nothing you know groundbreaking done to the visuals here you will notice like the reflections on the ground actually look really really detailed so I guess they did touch up certain aspects of the game but overall it's not gonna win any awards graphically that's for sure it is definitely a product of its time which personally I am 100% okay with now the music in this game is kind of an interesting scenario because they did lose a lot of the licensed music in this game which which is one of the reasons why this game was kind of stuck in limbo and never made its way to the Xbox 360 backwards compatibility program. It had a lot of copyrighted music in the background, which, you know, is definitely missed to a certain degree, but the music they replaced it with is perfectly fine. It gets the job done. It's definitely not the main focus of the game. Would it have been nice to have all the original music in the game? Definitely. Like, I could definitely remember some of the songs that were in the original, but I don't think the soundtrack is bad by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's perfectly fine for what they're trying to do, but if you've never played this before, you're not going to miss it, so that's the good news, but yeah, I think the music's okay. It's not going to, again, win any awards or anything like that. It's definitely not going into my playlist rotation or anything for video game music, but it gets the job done. It's good background noise, and it fills the dead air of, you know, zombies getting completely massacred by a chainsaw and pom-poms, so yeah, it's nothing amazing, but it does its job. Now, another thing with kind of the sound I guess you could say is the dialogue definitely sounds dated as well it has kind of that weird symptom of 360 audio where a lot of the voice actors audio peaks and just sounds really crackly at times so again you can tell that this is a product of its time I'm glad they didn't go back and redo the voice acting because I like the original voice actors in this game so there's a couple times when you're listening to it you'll hear like some pretty I guess jarring audio peaks and things like that where the audio kind of gets distorted a little little bit but aside from that it's not really a big deal and for the most part I'd say 95% of the time the audio sounds perfectly up to snuff compared to what it should be in the current I guess video game landscape as we know it right now so overall the voice acting and dialogue in this game is definitely a highlight and it definitely excels for the most part you will notice a couple moments though where it does kind of sound like they just dug up a floppy disk out of the desert and then imported the audio into the game so there are some times where the audio is a little jarring but for the most part, the voice work and voice acting is extremely well done in this game and holds up very well, even by modern standards. So again, the dialogue is one of the biggest highlights in this game for me. If you love like crude humor and sex jokes and just, you know, I don't know. It's the best type of corny ass humor, in my opinion, and it's really well done. I was constantly laughing, listening to the dialogue and moment to moment conversations between Juliet, Nick, and then the other characters within the game. So I think for the most part, very 
well done in that aspect. Now, replayability, I think, is a strong suit here. There is a new added mode to Lollipop Chainsaw Repop, which is the Repop mode, which basically replaces all the blood and gore with, like, sparkles and stars and rainbows and all that type of stuff. I have not had a chance to play that yet, but you can look up gameplay footage of it. It basically is the exact same game, just with some visual changes if you want to mix things up. And I'm happy to report, too, all the original content from the first game, aside from some licensed character skin crossovers, are in the game. So you have some of the most skimpy video game outfits you've probably ever seen, and overall, I'm really glad they did that because, you know, so many game studios and developers nowadays have, you know, just this weird guilt looking back on making cool or fun or sexy video game characters, and I'm really glad that they chose to preserve what this game was because in addition to that repop mode, you also have the game basically as it released, minus the licensed music and those skins. So if you're looking for a preserved experience here, you're definitely going to find it. And there's a ton of different outfits and cosmetics to unlock throughout your various playthroughs. You will not get everything in one playthrough. So there's definitely motivation to go back and get the various outfits for Juliet and the various upgrades and everything like that. So I think there's actually a fair bit of replay value here right off the bat, even after you just finish the game. If you're someone who wants to collect all the collectibles, get all the trophies, there's a time trial mode on top of that so you can go and try to beat like the par time, par score, and hit like key stat metrics in order to challenge yourself if you're looking to do that. But I have a feeling a lot of people are just going to want to replay this game every once in a while because it's fun. It's just a fun video game experience that we really just don't get enough of nowadays. So I think overall, if you can't tell, I love this game. I had a great time with it. It definitely has its flaws. It is not perfect. It is not even what I would consider to be an amazing game or anything like that. It's just one of those good, dumb, fun, turn off your brain, have an absolute blast playing through type titles that for the five to six hours you spend on your first playthrough, you're going to be laughing your ass off, having a smile on your face, and overall having probably one of the best times you've had in quite some time with a single player action video game. But overall, if I were to give this game a score, I'd probably give it a seven out of 10, which on my scale is like a good, which I think is more than fair for this. This is not a amazing game by any standard. And I think that's important to know going in. It is definitely rough around the edges, but the charm and just fun factor that it offers more than makes up for it. So I'm going to give this a seven out of 10, which equates to good on my rating scale. But I would definitely recommend that everyone go out and purchase this. I mean, $40 guys, like you're spending 70 bucks on absolute dog shit like Star Wars Outlaws or God of Snor Ragnarok. Go do yourself a favor, pick up an absolutely fantastic, fun title that you're really just going to have fun with from start to finish. I don't really know how else to word it. So let me know in the comment section your thoughts on Lollipop Chainsaw Repop Remastered. And let me know if you played the game, if you plan on picking it up. Always interested to hear your thoughts on whatever game I am talking about today. So with that said, guys, I want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well. You guys are the fucking best and I really do appreciate it. And with that shit said, I will catch you guys next time.